In this video, I'm going to show you how I made the engine for my Kawasaki Z1600 V8 back in 2001. The first thing I had to do was to get hold of an old set of Kawasaki Z1 crankcases and using my hacksaw, cut the top crankcase in half to remove the gearbox section. Then I had to work out how far I could lean back the rear bank of cylinders before the bottom of the barrel would hit the primary drive gear. This was done by eye, by filing metal from the bottom of the upper crankcase until it leaned back just the right amount. With the rear bank of cylinders now leaning back to their set angle, I can now notch the front of the crankcases to fit the front cylinders by sawing out this section here. And here's a top view of the crankcase showing the rear bank of cylinder mountings leant back. With the front part of the crankcase sawed off a second set of crankcases, I then had to mitre that to fill the gap and create the V8 crankcase. This was a critical part of the job. I had to cut this section out and it had to fit perfect and I had to get it right first time, otherwise I'd need to use another set of crankcases. But after lots of filing, I eventually got it onto some sandpaper, glued onto a bit of wood, lapped it backwards and forwards for hours until it fitted perfect. It was like a three dimensional puzzle keeping these two parts in line when I was lapping them to get them to be parallel, square and true. But eventually they all fitted perfect and there was barely any gaps. So I was really pleased. So I was now ready for welding. And here's the crankcases after I had them vapour blasted and the first stage welding was complete. The next thing I had to do was reposition the starter motor. Because the rear bank of cylinders were leant back, the motor had dropped down and hit the gearbox. So I had to move it out a little bit. You can see in this view the starter motor sticking out past the side of the crankcase in its new position. With the starter motor roughly in its new place, I had to make new pieces of metal to weld onto the crankcase to extend it out 10mm and also allow me to drill new holes to mount the existing standard generator cover. And here it is, all finished and drilled, ready to fit the cover, and it fitted perfect. With the crankcases roughed out, I stripped down two crankshafts to look at all the parts to work out how I'm going to fit an extra four connecting rods into the standard space where a standard crankshaft will fit. Looking at all the parts, I could see that the Kawasaki Z1 crankshaft was really over-engineered and I was able to shave metal off all the parts to give me the extra space. So I fitted the connecting rods into the lathe and turned it off about five millimetres from their width. And then I bought thinner roller bearings, as you can see here, but I had to make a new cage. That was a complicated job. And here you can see the slimmed down connecting rod with the existing standard roller bearing. The side thrust washers are also very thick on the Z1 crankshaft. I was able to remove a lot of material. They're about nearly three millimetres wide, so I took them down to one. I was also able to reduce the thickness of the flywheel webs. So with thinner connecting rods, thinner thrust washers, thinner flywheel webs, I was able to fit two connecting rods onto each of the four crank pins. And here's all the finished parts for my V8 crankshaft. All I had to do now was make some new big end roller cages out of 7075T6 aluminium. I measured an existing big end cage to get the sizes to make the aluminium cages, just making them a bit narrower. And here's four blanks ready for slotting. I made a little fixture that clamps onto my vertical slide on my old MyFed model maker's lathe. With this and a little slot drill in the chuck, I could then machine the slots, but they had radius ends, so I had to make a brooch that I go in and out to cut the corners out sharp. With the new big end cages machined and the new thinner rollers, I could do a trial assembly and I was really pleased. It fitted perfect. Before I can assemble the crankshaft, I need to make eight bronze bushes for the little end eyes to reduce the diameter so I can fit Z650 pistons. I need to fit smaller pistons to allow for the offsets between the cylinders. With the little end bushes fitted, I can now start assembling the crankshaft in my lathe, starting with the inner four cylinders. As the modified crankshaft components were pressed together, the original positions of the bearings remained. 
And here is the finished V8 crankshaft that's exactly the same width as a standard Z1 crankshaft. But I'm feeling a bit hungry now, so I think I'll go and make myself some toast. Mmm, that's much better. Right, let's get back on with this. I've got so many photographs to go through. A good feature of my V8 engine is that the bottom crankcase is absolutely standard and all the welding and the works in the top crankcase, but that's quite extensive, so I thought I'd better give it a bit of a heat treatment before I carried on much further. So I put it in the oven for about five hours at 230 degrees C. And here's the underside of the heavily modified top crankcase. The next thing I need to do is machine the areas where the bearings sit for the crankshaft. And in this picture you can see why I had to redirect the oil gallery on the underside of the upper crankcase. To bore the inner main bearing journals I just use a piece of steel with a cutter and I'm going to slide it in and out of the two existing outer bearings which I will hand scrape to fit perfect first. With the crankcases bolted up tight together and the two outer bearings in place with the steel bar and the cutter, I can put on a cut by using a feeler gauge against the bottom surface of the bearing which is untouched to put on a cut for the upper part of the bearing which has got weld on it. Then you progress in and out with the drill, taking off metal a little tiny bit at a time until the cutter just marks the bottom crankcase surface, then you know you're absolutely perfect. With the main bearings machined, I trial fitted the clutch shaft to make sure it all cleared, which it did, and then I can put the crankshaft in and bolt it all up tight for the first time, and it all span round great. My crankcases were now a V8 rather than a straight four, so I had to change the lugs on the right hand points casing to have two top lugs rather than one. By doing this, I retained the original look of the Z1 engine from the right hand side. The generator cover I fitted to the V8 engine was really badly damaged, so I screwed it to a block of wood on my lathe, trepanned out the outer surface, then I machined up a disc of aluminium and bolted it in place from the inside. The rear facing cylinder block needed a little bit of work at the bottom where it mates with the engine, so I had to file away a few fins to clear bits and bobs, and then I had to make eight new liners from solid cast iron bar, and I'll be boring them out to fit Z650 pistons, and this is why the capacity of my V8 is 1600cc, and not 1800cc. The rear barrel now fitted perfect and the front barrel is standard. With the new liners machined I pressed them into the barrels and did some trial assemblies with the pistons. First the back bank then the front bank building the whole engine eventually in one piece then taking it all apart again to build it properly. This was a proper fun bit of the build, working out how to do the cam timing, the ignition timing, and building it all up and taking it all down, building it up, taking it all down, and eventually thinking, right, this is it now, new gasket, I'm going to build it for the final time, and it's going to run. With the engine pretty much complete, it was time to start thinking about the frame. This needed a massive amount of modification to fit the engine in and still retain the original lines of a Z1. With the frame modifications complete, it was time to refit the engine just to check it still fits perfect before it goes off the paint. A week or so later, the frame came back from the powder coaters and looked amazing in its gloss black. I couldn't wait to get the bike up on its wheels, so I took it into the kitchen because I needed a bit more space. When I built the front wheel, I spoke it into an 18 inch rim from a KH400. This gave me a bit more clearance at the front to clear the engine. And here's the engine, all ready to lift in. That was a proper difficult job. With the engine bolted tightly in the frame, I could complete all the wiring and do the ignition timing properly with a dial gauge and a degree disc until it was just perfect. I had relocated the battery and the battery box and all the electrics on the Z1 frame to clear the exhaust manifolds at the rear. I had the stubs already made, but I had to complete this system now, weld it all up, remove it and send it off for chroming. And here you can see the battery and the relocated electrical components. 
I fitted the Z1A petrol tank and it hit the carbs underneath on both sides, but this was easily rectified by cutting out two pockets and welding in some new pieces of metal, then there was plenty of room. I refitted the tank and it fitted perfect, so now I had to trim down the side panels to clear the rear exhaust pipes. When I first made the V8, I fitted Yamaha CV carburetors because they were really short, but they turned out to be difficult to tune, so I thought I need to fit the standard Z1 carburetors, but they were too long. But I thought if I cut them down, I might be able to make them fit. So that's exactly what I did. What I had to do was to convert the carburetor from a link lift to a cable lift by cutting off the top inch of the carburetor just here. Then the slide, when it's pushed up to there, if I cut off the top part of the slide as well, I can make a screw on cap and convert it into the old VM style bikini carburetor. So now it's a simple job of gripping the carburetor body gently in my vise and sawing off the end with my hacksaw. Being careful to saw just above the line so I can machine it down to size on my lathe. With the top portion removed, I cut off the little bits around the side as well, just here. So I turn the carburetor vertical to make it easier and saw them off with my hacksaw. I then remove the final little bits, being careful to make sure I don't cut too deep. Then it's all ready to go in my lathe to machine into a nice smooth diameter and cut a thread, a one millimetre pitch thread. With the carburetor body gripped in a three jaw chuck and supported with metal stock centre, I carefully machine the end face nice and square. Then I change cutters to machine the diameter. The carburetor is only gripped very lightly in my chuck, so I take very fine cuts. With the diameter skimmed, I put a bit of ZX1 extra lube oil on the surface and then put my single point cutting tool up and cut a one millimetre pitch thread. With the thread machining finished, I take the carburetor out of the chuck to have a quick look and I'm really pleased, it looks perfect. So I get a little file and deburr a few sharp edges off the webs and then I refit the throttle slides in to check for the height. So I put it right up to the top, make a little mark with a pen and then I can put that back in the lathe and machine that down. The throttle slides are now shorter than they were originally, but fit perfectly in the body. And when pushed right to the top, they are wide open, which is just perfect. And here's the modified carburetors fitted to the V8. The petrol tank, side panels and rear fin were away at my friend Neil's paint shop being painted in Z1A colors. And I couldn't wait to have a go on the bike. So I thought I'll just put some fuel in the carburetors and give it a ride up the street and it went really well, and the pull from the engine was immense, and I was really chuffed. <clears throat> Hello? Hello? Is that Emmett Brown? It is! Great! Now, I need you to take me back to the year 2002 as soon as possible so I can get some video of my old V8. What do you mean that you've got a flat battery? What, there's no electricity left to charge it because it's all been used in electric cars? Oh, that's no good, is it? I'll have a quick word with Greta and see what we can do. OK, then. Bye. 
Sadly, I haven't got any video of my V8 running apart from this one clip that's about five seconds long. So that's all I've got for now. But who knows, I might make another one and I can make a proper video. The V8 is on display in the Barber Motorcycle Museum in Birmingham, Alabama, USA. So if you're nearby and passing, don't forget to call in and have a look. I hope you enjoyed this video on my Kawasaki V8. I've had a lovely time looking back through my book on how I made it. Anyway, hope to see you all soon and don't forget to subscribe.